There's a difference between Google Chrome and Google Drive. Google Chrome is the browser that we're using, and that's the icon, that round one. And Google Drive has a whole different purpose. We'll talk about both of those a little bit. Whenever you're using Google Drive, you should be using the Google Chrome browser. And we use it because it's more reliable when you're using Google Chrome. When you're using your Google Drive, it's more reliable if you're using Google Chrome. And you can save your bookmarks and extensions. If you have a Fed County computer, it should already be installed. And if not, then you can uh, install it on your home computer. If you use more than one browser, still stick with, if you're using uh, Google Drive, then stick with Chrome. But if you're used to using Firefox for Infinite Campus and something else with Munis, it doesn't matter that you've got more than one of those installed on your computer. So why do we use Google Drive? And just a little bit of history here. First of all, because it provides free storage. If you're in your personal account, you have a limited amount of storage and then you can buy more storage from Google. But if you have using your school account, you have unlimited storage. It also is the way we get to a lot of the free applications that we use from docs to sheets and slides, all those different different things. And then it saves automatically. Some people will save it saves immediately and we may get a chance to look at that. Usually up on your document up at the top, it'll tell you if all changes are being saved in Drive. And it's not immediate, but it's usually within just a few seconds. We'll admit a few more people. And we found collaboration to be so much easier when we were using Google than we were using Microsoft. It is possible to collaborate on Microsoft documents when you're using the online, but the Google became so much easier. If you need to find Google, the, the icon, you can look in your waffle, or if you have your bookmarks turned on, then there's a rainbow waffle, or you can go to drive.google.com, or you can add it to your bookmark bar and then it's just one click and you don't have to go clicking to find things. The first time you get in your Google Drive, if, the, if you've not been in it before, it may come up and it, you may need to click go to Google Drive. We used to always tell you to choose business, but this new page that they've made, you need to go to personal and click on Google Drive. And then it may ask you for your email address and your password. If you need help with your password, if you call the help desk, use the 381 help. They can help reset passwords. And then of course, if the students are having trouble, they can use the number for parents and students. If it asks you, you will, if you want to link your data, say yes, you do want to link your data so that no matter what computer you get on, all your data is linked. Um, turn on sync, it may ask you some questions to turn on. And then sometimes it will ask you if you want, if you're on a work, school, or corporate account or business, um, look for school. And, and usually a lot of times they think of us as a business account, but that first screen that I showed you did want us to click on personal. Okay. And now we're going to head into our, our drive. So I'm going to get out of this presentation. If you go through it, Later, it's got some notes that you could use and it'll show you about sharing. And then towards the end, it has some resources that you might wanna use and some other items. But let's head into our Google Drive. So if I open up, again, I said you could find it under your waffle and you can click on the drive here. Sometimes they call on the bookmark up here, they call that one the rainbow waffle. And I'm going to click on the arrow. Yep, I'm not finding it there at all. I have found it there in the past. You can type drive. And I used that used to be my favorite because as soon as I started typing, it would go. And anymore, I've gotten into using my bookmark bar and just putting a bookmark here because it's one click to get in there or I make myself folders. And I have a lot of the things I go to constantly here. 
So I find that an easy way to get into my drive. If you want to organize your drive, then I create folders. I like folders. Doesn't mean I keep everything in them, but I, but I do like them. Um, and on the top right, there's a button where you can click that you want to look at your folders in grid view so that you can see more of them. Or you can click that you want them in a list view. To make a folder, you're going to click on the new button on the top right, on the top left under drive. I'm going to click new and the folder button is right under your mouse. A lot of people miss it because you're looking way down here and your mouse is sitting on top of it. I'm going to click folder and I could name my folders. And think about large categories, things like you may want personal items or one for the classes that you teach, if you teach multiple classes or subject areas, whatever is going to kind of help you keep things organized. Today I'm going to make one training. And I think I've already got one called training, so I'm going to call this one training Google Drive just so I'll have something to work on and click create. When you get your folder created, I've got so many, it's nice that it highlights it. Yeah, I knew I had one called training and training topics. I don't even know that those have anything in them. These are the ones I use sometimes when I'm teaching. One of the nice things you can do if it helps you, if you like the color coding, you notice that all the folders come in gray. You can color your folders. My STLP, when I'm in charge of STLP, I keep it red so I can usually find it easy. I do access my folder sometimes on my iPad and that makes it show up a lot better. I can see if I've shared my folder because it's got a little person on it. So to make it a color, I can right click on that and I can click change color. And these are the only colors I have a choice from. I heard, saw on Facebook the other day, somebody said, what other choices can I use? No, these are the ones you're going to be using. You're going to use the ones that um, they've offered. The other thing you can do, um, I'm going to right click on this and click rename. You can use emojis and sometimes it helps and, and you can paste them. You can find them online and then you can paste them if you want to or you can put them in your I put a space after that. You, you can get them if you're on a Windows computer. I can right click and emojis right here. And I can choose one of these pictures if it helps me identify what I'm working on right now and put it in there and then click OK. And so it may help you to find a little bit and be organized by having your emoji and having your pictures. If you like your folders alphabetized, the, and you don't want to mess with that, then you can put your emoji at the end. There can be a problem with that if you go into grid view. And then if you've got a really long title, so if, if I'd had a really long title, look, try to look at the one above this, STEM fair products or pictures it looks like. If it's got so many words on it that it falls out of the box, then the emoji's not going to show. If you put, I'm going to right click, rename again. If you put the emoji at the beginning, evidently I've put more than one. And these are coming in gray. I'm not real sure why. Maybe that particular emoji. That one's red. If I was going to use an emoji. I don't know why I'd put a gray one in there. Get rid of those. Yeah, I've got an extra space. I'll get rid of it. If you put an emoji at the beginning, the folders move to the top. I'm going to put these in alphabetical order again. So I was working on sites. I was finding some slide templates one day and I wanted all my folders, my, my, I wanted to find this folder easily. I put an underline at the top of it, web images, and then I started using some emojis. It has put those at the top. Numbers, you can number your folders and it keeps them in number order. And then 
you've got the ones of mine that are alphabetical. Once you've got a folder created, you can right click on it. And if you are in your drive, and I'm being particular about this because this works in your My Drive, it won't work in your shared drive, you can share a whole folder. I can get a shareable link and everybody I send the link to could have the link for this folder or I could put somebody's name in here. Sunny, I see you're in here. So I could start looking up Sunny's name and if I find her name, put her name in here. I could send her a note if I wanted to. I could change her rights and make it so she could view everything in the folder or she could add and edit to things in the folder and I could send this to her or I could not send the, the email. I could just tell her about it and click OK. And now, yes, I know I skipped sending invitations. So now that has been shared with Sunny and I know it's been shared with somebody because it's got a little picture on it. There's nothing in it. One of the advantages to sharing a whole folder over a document, if Sunny and I were working on a project together I, and we were putting things in this document, then everything we put in, in this folder would have the same sharing rights. My suggestion to help keep your item, your, your Google Drive organized is that whenever you're going to create something, so I'm clicking on new if I was doing a doc, sheet, slides, Google Forms, making a site, that I open the folder first and I create it in the folder because it's already going to be located there. I'm not going to have to save it there later, drag it into the folder later. later. And anything that I have created in this folder Okay, so anything I have created in this folder is already going to be shared. So if I click on the share button, I can see it already says, says that this is shared with Sunny. If there's a lot of people this is shared with and you can't see all the names because there's too many, you can click on advanced and you can see all the sharing names here. If I did not want to share this particular document with Sunny, I could exit out. And even though the folder is shared with her, she might not have rights to this one particular document. Or um, I could leave it that way. So sometimes if you're working in a Google Classroom and you have a lot of things you want the kids to get to, instead of putting them of, instead of having to, uh, add a lot of things the kids are just going to look at. This is not where you'd probably put things they're going to, they're going to work on. You give every kid their own copy usually or share with all of them so they could edit it. But if it's a lot of things, resources the kids are going to look at, then you might want to share the whole folder and then use that link to share that in Google Drive. Rename. There was also, if you right click, you can remove it so you could delete it. If someone has shared something with you, it's usually in the shared with me folder. And sometimes you've got you've gotten an email from somebody, but if someone has shared something with you, Josh recently shared some slides with me in case I wanted to change my background and zoom a little bit. And if somebody has shared something with you, this is a really bad place to keep up with it. You want to keep your drive organized, but your shared with me is only organized in order of when somebody shared it. So the longer somebody shared it, the longer ago it's shared further down. There is a search button up here and I could click if I remember the name of something and put it in there. So often I don't even remember the name of something. So a better idea is as soon as somebody shares something with you is to right click on it. I can add it to my drive and what it is like it's saying here it is a shortcut to your drive I can also make my own copy of it now remember if you make your own copy of it then you're working on a different document 
you and that, that person are not both working off the same document. You now have two different documents, but you have your own copy of it. Or if I add it to my drive and that person and I are still working on it together, we are both really looking at the same document. So if I were to add this to my drive, the advantage is it comes up with a box and it kind of says, where do you want it in my drive? If I click right now and add, it will be in my drive, but it won't be in my folder, but I could go back and find it later and drag it in my folder. Or it's kind of different. You would think you might come over here on where my drive and double click. That doesn't work real well. It did that time. Sometimes it works better to click on the arrow. And I could come down. Let's see, that was background for Zoom. I wonder if I've got a folder called Zoom. Got a lot of folders, and now I seem to want to go to the Z one. Uh, nope. I scroll there we go do, do. zoom I've got a folder called zoom so I could it did work to double click over here or I can click on the arrow to open up that folder and here's the other things in that folder and I can add that shortcut and so now when I want to go back and find this I don't have to search for my shared with me I can go in my 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 drive and look in zoom I think that's the basics I think we got it how about some questions? What are what are you having trouble with or you might need help with? Somebody want to ask a question? Bookmarks at the top, you may notice that you have a new, if you are logged in as you, not just in Drive, but way at the tip top, if you're logged on as you in Chrome, then you may notice that you have a new bookmark folder called NTI bookmarks. And under that is the link to our website that we've created if you want to talk to anyone usually between eight and five some days eight and three thirty so you could click on the link and join office hours at any time to ask any question if you want to see the schedule it's linked here on the first page or at the top right under teacher resources you can see the schedule and then if we've made a video or have some extra information for you they're on here so some of the um, newest things we have put in are uh, some new things, like you can turn on Google Meet straight from your classroom, but there's really some safety things you need to know, so you might wanna watch that video. We are still using Zoom, and if you use a meeting room like you all just came into and some people use passwords, we're finding Zoom very safe to use something new we added other online tools we've just gotten cami approved and we have a session on it i think wednesday on how to use it and i posted the videos right now were made by cami that were posted up here camis are a way to use pdfs and you have this shortcut i think this got pushed out to us to the teachers and to all the students you can click folder upload or if you're going to if you already have a folder and need to create a folder I'd create the folder first and then I'd open up inside the folder if you have a lot of docs to upload and I'd click new and you can click file upload and if you had saved them on your computer I could click the documents that I wanted to move and click open and they would upload okay one of the nice things I like about Zoom, if I was using this with my uh, students, once I click on end meeting, I can end meeting for everybody. So if you need something, you're welcome to ask. If not, we'll head out of here. We'll all head over to office hours if you need more help.